Chapter 10 Agents of Erosion Part 2 In the last chapter, we have studied the agents of erosion that are related to the climate. In this chapter, we shall study groundwater and sea waves as agents of erosion. The work of these two agents is related to specific locations. The work of groundwater is predominantly found in areas having pervious rocks whereas sea waves operate in the coastal areas. A. Groundwater Some of the rainwater seeps through the ground. Some water moves down through pervious rocks and along the cracks present in the rocks. On reaching impermeable rocks, it gets stored there. Such water stored under the ground is called groundwater. Groundwater level The upper level of the stored groundwater is called groundwater level. It varies according to the slope of the land, porosity and compactness of the rocks and the rainfall in the region. Groundwater level also changes according to the seasons. In the rainy season, it is closer to the ground surface, whereas during summer it drops down deeper. Some of the groundwater reappears on the ground surface in the form of springs. You may have seen wells at a number of places. The water we get in the wells is also groundwater. Work of Groundwater Soluble minerals in the rocks get dissolved in water and they move along with the groundwater. This is called erosion by groundwater. If soluble minerals are supplied beyond the saturation level or if the amount of groundwater is reduced due to evaporation, the dissolved minerals precipitate and get deposited. Some rocks contain soluble minerals in a large proportion. In the regions of such rocks, the work of groundwater is dominant. Limestone is a good example of this type of work. Typical landforms are produced by groundwater in limestone areas. These are called cast landforms. The erosion, transportation and deposition by groundwater gives rise to the following landforms. See figure 10.1. Landforms produced by groundwater. Number 1. Sinkholes. In limestone areas, surface water penetrates through the cracks and joints in the rock. Some amount of limestone gets dissolved in this water, leading to the formation of holes on the surface. As this process continues, for many years, the holes grow in size. Such holes are called sinkholes. As the water flowing over the surface enters these holes, it disappears. It may reappear on the surface at some distance ahead. Number 2. Caves The water that moves down through sinkholes continues to flow underground. If it strikes a compact and impermeable rock layer, Instead of penetrating further, it starts getting stored and flows parallel to the ground slope. Minerals like calcium carbonate present in the rocks there get dissolved in this groundwater. Over a period of time, this process gives rise to caves. Such caves are present in Meghalaya and Andhra Pradesh. Such a cave is also seen on the Kanhur Plateau in Ahmednagar district. Number 3. Stalactites and Stalagmites As the water containing salts moves through limestone area, it trickles through cave ceilings. Part of this trickling water gets evaporated and the salts get accumulated along the ceiling surface and on the floor. As this process continues, the accumulations along the ceiling and on the floor grow and this gives rise to columns. The column growing from the ceiling downward is called stalactite, while the one that grows from the ground upward is called stalagmite. 
such forms can be seen in Bora Caves in Andhra Pradesh and also in the caves at Kanhur near Parner in Ahmednagar district. B. Sea Waves In the coastal areas, sea waves perform the work of erosion. The location where the attack of sea waves is intense, erosion takes place on a large scale, whereas at locations where the force of sea waves is weak, deposition takes place. As a result, erosion takes place in some parts along the coast while in other parts there is deposition. Landforms produced by the erosional work of sea waves. The portions of land projecting into the sea are called headlands. The basal portions of headlands get severely eroded. In such areas, rocky coasts are formed. Landforms produced by the erosive activity of sea waves are shown in figure 10.2. Number 1. Sea Cliffs Due to the continuous attack of sea waves, the base of headlands get eroded and it gives rise to near vertical slopes. This is called a sea cliff, for example, Harihareshwar and Bhagwati Bhandar. Number 2. Sea Caves When sea waves attack the base of headlands, some air gets trapped in the cracks in the rock and exerts pressure on the rock. As the wave recedes, the trapped air gets released in an explosive manner. This gives rise to tremendous energy. As this happens, frequently, the rocks become weak and a niche is formed. Over a period of time, this niche grows broader and deeper. This is called a sea cave. Number 3. Wave Cut Platform On the rocky coast, sea cliffs are severely attacked by sea waves and get receded. This results in the formation of a flat platform at the base of sea cliffs. Such flats are called wave cut platforms. Besides these, erosion by sea waves gives rise to landforms like sea arches and sea stacks. As the Maharashtra coast is largely a rocky coast, we can see such landforms at places like Srivardhan or along the coast of Ratnagiri, Sindhudurg, etc. Landforms produced by depositional work of sea waves. The coast between two adjacent headlands is somewhat concave in plane. The particles eroded and released from the headlands get deposited in this concave portion. Besides, rivers and other agents of erosion bring large amounts of sediment from the land. Moreover, the sea waves also bring sediments from the deep sea area. All these different types of sediments get deposited in this area. This deposition by the waves gives rise to the following landforms. Number 1. Beaches Large amounts of sediment come from the landward side in the areas between two adjacent headlands. Moreover, as these areas are shallow, the velocity of waves decreases. As a result, the sediments coming from the land as well as those coming from the deep sea get deposited in this area. Predominantly fine sand gets settled along the coast. Such sandy deposits along the coasts are called beaches. Along the Maharashtra coast, long beaches have been developed at Devayagar, Guhagar, etc. The Marina Beach at Chennai is the longest beach in India. Number 2. Sandbars Sand gets deposited along the sides of headlands. Such deposition extends parallel to the coast from one headland to the next. Over a period of time, these deposits extend over long distances 
and developed into a bund or bar that protrudes into the water at some distance away from the beach. These are called sandbars. At times, the material from the beach eroded by sea waves forms a chain of islands at some distance away from the beach. This also gives rise to the development of sandbars. Along the Maharashtra coast, we can find such bars at Sri Vardhan and Rev Danda. Number 3. Lagoons The brackish water separated from the seawater by sandbars and lying in the areas between the coast and the bars is called a lagoon. Large waves do not get generated in lagoons as these waters are separated from the open sea. In the coastal region of Kerala, large lagoons are formed. One of them is the Vembanad Lagoon. The Chilka Lake in Odisha is also an example of a lagoon. Uniqueness of Coastal Areas Compared to the other regions of erosion, the work of sea waves goes on ceaselessly. Therefore, its effect becomes apparent within a short period of time. Erosion in some part and deposition in adjoining part keeps on taking place constantly. The beaches and bars which are normally the products of deposition are also subject to erosion. Coastal regions are always vulnerable to the risk of getting submerged due to increase in sea level. Coastal regions are also the regions of high population density. Therefore, the coastal zone management warrants serious attention.